Hello, Faith Community Bible Church. I just wanted to take a moment and share an encouraging word. Uh, I know because of this coronavirus, a lot has gone on. There's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of things that we're experiencing uh, that's we've never come across. Our, our normal rhythms of life have been changed. Our economic situations have been changed, at least maybe some of us where we're working. Uh, if we're working, uh, there's a lot of fear with this virus and a lot of reasons to be praying. And I'm calling on the church to be doing that. Uh, the president has said we can look forward to this type of, of uh, staying in place and staying in our homes until at least all of April. I mean, we're looking to May before any hopes of meeting again. And so until then, we're just going to share videos and do our sermons on video and all this and, and trust the Lord to be at work. But I wanted to take uh, just a moment in, in light of all these things, share an encouraging word from God's scriptures. Um, I was reading my devotion time in Mark chapter four, and the end of the end of chapter four, it's it's where the the wind and sea obey Jesus. And if you're familiar with that passage, it's a few things that just jump out to me uh, about this passage, and I wanted to share them with you. Um, you know, and to this point, Jesus has has taught in parables, and he's uh, left a lot of the people scratching their heads. They don't understand exactly what he's saying, but he's always brought his disciples together and and shared with them the meaning of all of the parables. And he had just finished teaching them about the faith of a mustard seed. And when that ends, we Mark tells us that he sent the multitude away and he, and he told the disciples, go uh, get some boats and, and let's go to the other side. Let's cross over. So they made provision for that. They did exactly what Jesus told them to do. And I, I think that's one of the first things that jumps out to me is, if you're familiar with the story, he, you know, they get in the boats and then they go and then there's a storm and Jesus is sleeping and they, they have this reaction, uh, being kind of a little bit upset about this, um, that Jesus is sleeping while they are in danger of perishing. And, you know, the first thing that jumps out to me is, is number one, the disciples did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They secured the boats, they got the boats, they were in the boats, and they were going to the other side. Uh, nowhere have they, is, did Mark hint at, right, rebellion or doing anything wrong. They did exactly what Jesus said. And that teaches us that even God's children, his saints, his sons and daughters, are not immune from suffering. And there's uncertainties in life. There's things we go through. And it doesn't mean we've done something wrong. It doesn't mean that we've sinned. Uh, we just simply go through this life and there's difficulties, there's struggles, there's problems, there's um, issues. And the disciples have this moment. I, I even wonder if they were thinking this. You told us to cross now. You should know that the storm was coming. But that, is, of course, is not, not recorded in Mark. We just have to wonder about that. But, you know, what's interesting, the second thing that jumps out to me about this passage is you know, they're frustrated with Jesus, but they go and they say, teacher, do you, do you even care? Right? There's the, the, do you even care? You're sleeping on the job. Do you even care that we perish? And what's amazing is the title here. This situation, the disciples don't need a teacher. You know, they've been with Jesus. Clearly, he is the teacher. He's the teacher. Um, he has stressed that throughout Scripture. But right here, they don't need a teacher. They need someone who can deliver them. Right? They need a Savior from the storm. And you see some of their frustration because you know Jesus gets up and he goes to work immediately. He says uh, to the wind and the waves, he says, peace, be still. Right? Uh, Mark records it like this, that he arose and rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, peace, be be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So he, he immediately doesn't speak to them. He arose after they called him teacher, and then clearly they're, they're upset at him. Um, and then he tells them, after he does what exactly they need, he, does, uh, he reminds them of their lack of faith. He says, you know, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? 
And again, he just taught them about the faith of a mustard seed and he brought them in and explained the parables and they get in the boats and this happens. You know, Jesus is sleeping. They're upset at this. They, they interpret this, that Jesus is sleeping on the job. He doesn't care about us. But yet when they wake the teacher, they were smart enough. They knew enough about Christ to, to call upon him. They didn't take matters into their own hands. They turned to the teacher. And it's interesting, this passage, I mean, we learn a lot of things. Uh, sometimes we come to the Lord with little faith. Sometimes our hearts, if we're honest with ourselves, is far from the Lord. Maybe sometimes we think, I can't believe he didn't do this for me. I can't believe he didn't move on my behalf. Maybe sometimes we, we know enough to come to him, just like the disciples, but we don't come with the right title. Yeah, teacher, when we should be saying, Savior. Or maybe we should be coming saying, Lord, Master, Deliverer. And I, and I, I want to just point this out, that they come with the wrong attitude, and Jesus operates. Jesus moves. Jesus restores. Jesus brings the great calm. Jesus calms their hearts in, in the context of this storm, and, and they, they become overwhelmed. I mean, they look at this and go, wow, who, who truly is this? I mean, the right attitude finally comes after Jesus does this, and, and Mark records it like this, and they fearfully, and they were, excuse me, they uh, feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the waves, excuse me, and the sea obey him? You know, how is it? I mean, that's the right response. And Mark, again, he wants to stress the supremacy of Christ, so the creation responds to him. Creation is, is at um, mercy to him, right? It, it is it is doing exactly what Jesus tells it to do. He says, peace be still, and the storm ends. And too often in life, you know, we just see so much of our identity here. I, you know, I'm not going to ask for, for anyone to raise their hands. How, how many times have you come and wondered, at, you know, with this little faith and maybe questioned if God's sleeping on the job? Uh, or why am I going through this? What have I done that's wrong? And clearly the disciples have done nothing wrong. They've come with little faith, but they had enough to come to him. And this, this teacher goes to work. He calms the storms. So this word I want to encourage you is, is even though we may feel that we're not all together, I, my faith isn't strong enough, or I'm not good enough, or the Lord won't listen. And one, we're going through a difficult time. Right? It's a difficult situation. Two, the Lord hears. He's available. You know, in this, in this passage, we see the deity of Christ, his human side needed to sleep. Well, we know he's risen. Um, he doesn't have to sleep. The Lord doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He's available. And if you have storms in your life, if there is fear, you're troubled, I think now's the time to call upon him. If you think your faith isn't strong enough, I think the disciples just knew to, to turn. They knew enough to turn to, to Christ. And even though they didn't give him the right, the right title as a deliverer, um, they knew enough to turn to him. And their faith wasn't great, and yet God moves because he's a great God. So I want to encourage you with, with this word. I, you know, turn to him. If you feel that you, you can't, you're unable, I think now more than ever, call upon him. If you're going through fears, uh, tribulation, issues, problems, turn to him. Uh, turn to him. Let him calm the, the storms of our lives. You know, he's sovereign over all this. There's never a moment where he's absent. There's never a moment where he checks out. There's never a moment where he's on a coffee break. God is always active in his creation. He's he sovereignly orchestrates, and, and there's times where we don't understand, we may question. But in complete faithfulness and obedience, we know. He holds my life. He knows me better than I know myself. He knows everything about me. He's the, the uh, omniscient God. He knows us. He knows your strengths, your weaknesses. And I just want to encourage you, call upon him. Call out to him. Uh, come to him. The other thing that I'd like to do, I'd just like to encourage, uh, you know, faith community. Um, if you have a word you'd like to share, maybe you'd like to read a passage of scripture, 
read a psalm. I love the psalms. Or maybe even sing a song or do something unique with your family. Just an encouraging word you'd like to share with others uh, in, our, in our church family through, through the medium of Facebook. Uh, please send that to me. Uh, my email is ttolbert at faithcommunitybible.org. Uh, I'll try to put that in the link below. Uh, just send it to me, and I'll, I'll do my best to get that out there. I would love to hear testimony. I would love to hear encouraging words. I'd love to hear what the Lord is doing in your life and how you can encourage others uh, in, a, in a, just a real simple way. So if you're able to do that, take some video or um, record something, please send it to us. We'd love to share that with the family our church family, and just encourage one another. Be open, uh, be a light to shine, be be going. Um, God's got a plan and a purpose in all this, and, and our, He has our attention. And so that's where we need to be. We need to be calling upon Him. The church needs to be awakened. Uh, the church needs to come in repentance and, and humbly seek His face. Pray for deliverance. Pray that God would be glorified, and that's where our heart's at. So I encourage you, Faith Community Bible Church, uh, with this word. And again, if you have some things to share, please send them my way. All right, until we meet again, uh, God bless you.